fundamental question uh, when thinking about a paradigm for economics, and that is, uh, what is the purpose of economic activity? Right? If, we, if we take economics in the traditional definition, that is the allocation of scarce resources. Right? And uh, uh, it seems to me that uh, our contemporary world is faced with this condition. That is, we are in a state of globalization without communion. Right? And so I began to think, and I, and I agree with uh, Dr. Kedato Yen, that uh, we, we would do well to take some inspiration from what China is doing. Right? And, and I think that um, China under President Xi Jinping has uh, given us a roadmap or even a vision for, for the world. Right? And he has been speaking about uh, a community, constructing a community of common destiny. Right? Uh, and I think this is, this is important if we are to consider a new paradigm for economics. And that is, uh, what are we pursuing? in our economic activity. So I, it must be uh, what we will call the common good. And by the common good, I take it from the Catholic tradition. That is, common good refers to all the social conditions that make uh, it possible for individual human beings to find their fulfillment. And I think that's a good place to, to start. That, uh, uh, the economy has to be oriented towards the common good and we need a philosophical account that can, uh, that can gather uh, different leaders to work together. And so while I was doing the literature review for this paper, I looked at the, the journal Business Ethics Quarterly and I was very impressed that I saw uh, a number of papers where scholars are, are writing about Aristotelian ethics again. You know, they, they go back to this idea from the politics you know, uh, that uh, the, the economy is a natural outgrowth of human life. Right? That human beings are unable to survive or to do well by themselves. Right? So the household is a basic unit for human survival. Right? And then we, we gather into villages and we form a state so that we can have all that we need for human flourishing. So Aristotle thinks that the, the economy is not for the creation of wealth. That's very important for, for him. Right? Uh, economic activity is at the service of human flourishing. And so we, we go on to, to consider the, the distinction that Aristotle invokes. No? And it, it's, been, uh, it's been repeatedly studied uh, in the past 10 years or so. Right? The distinction between oikonomia and krematistike. Right? So oikonomia is understood as household management. You know? The exchange the production, consumption, the exchange of goods and services, what, what is needed for human life and human flourishing. Krematistike is the production, consumption, exchange of goods and services right, that go beyond that. Now, it doesn't mean that krematistike is immoral in some way. Not at all. But the, the problem begins here, right? And I think it's this, that uh, oikonomia is qualitative in nature. Yeah. What we need is to enjoy a particular standard of living, you know, uh, that is amenable to human flourishing, you know, for human beings to fulfill their vocation, to, have, to enjoy a good life. And so, theoretically, it's limited. You know, household management 
is the limited consumption of goods and services and the production will, will, will be adjusted accordingly. But crematistike, no? wealth accumulation is distinctly quantitative in nature. Right? And therefore, it is potentially unlimited. And this can lead to immoral uh, aims as well as immoral outcomes. And we miss the point of economic activity. Right? Life becomes the pursuit of wealth. And wealth and production becomes uh, for the sake of uh, profit maximization. I think this is where the, 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 the problem begins. And so the, the next key idea would be this, that uh, we, if we are to present a new paradigm of economics, we have to, we have to insist that uh, the goal of economic activity is to pursue the common good and uh, we are seeking human flourishing. Um, and wealth creation needs to involve wealth distribution as well as uh, economic distribution. I think this is the interrelated parts of the economy that has been uh, neglected. Uh, we don't have a system by which uh, production of goods and services is well connected to uh, wealth production. Right? Wealth production is not well connected to distribution and economic development in a in a fair way so we our our global capitalist system suffers from the objective of crematistike and so uh, i would propose that we we bring back the insights of of aristotle you know, and return to oikonomia you know. now specifically i think that uh, there's a paradigm that's already available that could be useful for our purposes. Right? Namely, what is called the economy of communion. Right? Uh, this was mentioned by Pope Benedict in his encyclical Caritas in Veritate. Huh? I'm, I'm sorry that uh, I'm going backwards and not forwards. Huh? People are talking about Fratelli Tutti this morning. Huh? I'm going back to uh, Benedict the 16th. But uh, he actually mentioned this movement, you know, the economy of communion, also known as EOC. Right? And Pope Francis has also spoken about this. You know, and he has encouraged this movement. What is this about? The, the economy of communion was founded by Chiara Lubric. As you know, uh, she's the lady, uh, the foundress of the Focolare movement. And so the economy of communion is about, it's almost 30 years old. It presents a, a, a paradigm yeah. of economic activity. Right. It's meant to be a, a middle way between profit-based companies and non-profit organizations. So what businesses in the economy of communion do is that they, they operate as profit-making enterprises. But the, the difference is how they look at profit, you know, wealth creation. Right? Wealth creation is not for the purpose of profit maximization. They operate based on uh, spiritual uh, guidelines as well as uh, moral principles. So uh, some some idea of the spiritual background. No? So Focolare is, this, is, is a movement that aims at fomenting uh, communion among uh, human beings. And Chiara Lubick had, had this um, uh, intuition no? that uh, the practice of spirituality is the encouragement of the culture of giving what we would call charity. Right? And she saw the problem, the problem of wealth accumulation. 
is found in the culture of having. And so the, the purpose of uh, economic activity is to uh, first uh, make a decent living and to make profits so that we can share goods among our members of the human family. And so uh, economy of communion uh, uh, business owners operate on certain moral principles. They voluntarily take up this commitment. Right? So they, they divide their profits into three parts. First is to continue uh, building their own business, to develop their business so that their businesses become sustainable. So they could be uh, 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 printers, book operators, any, any kind of um, private business initiatives and they spend another part of their profit to develop the culture of giving, to give human formation, to develop leaders for the next generation. And the third part of their profit goes to projects that have social purpose. For example, education, poverty, alleviation, refugee uh, needs, and so on. So they have a a different view about the purpose of profit you know, in the place of economic activity. Right? And so the economy of communion has certain uh, well-defined goals. For example, to, to, to reduce exclusion. You know? There are people who are excluded you know, due to um, lack of education, lack of opportunity, lack of information, lack of technology. So there's a, there's, there's a part that is working at reducing exclusion. There's a, there's a component that, that deals with giving business people a spirituality. That, that doing business is not simply dog eat dog. It's not cutthroat. Doing business is a vocation. And it, having a vocation entails a spirituality, a way of living that makes human beings better uh, or makes human life flourishing. Right? And it emphasizes also job creation and finally communion among uh, human beings. So I think this captures very well uh, uh, a spiritual way of understanding oikonomia. It, it promotes common good and human flourishing. And there's a importance in the the, the the, the value of witness. In the world today, there are already 800, more than 800 businesses under this umbrella of the economy of communion. They are found in the North America, uh, Latin America, in, in Africa, and in Europe. There are also a couple of companies that are found in the Philippines, in, in Asia. So it, it began in 1991, and so we are almost 30 years in. It's not the solution to all our problems, but I submit that they have something um, important, uh, an, an idea, a series of commitments that help us to, to move in the right direction you know, as, a, as a paradigm for a new economics. And so the, my third key idea is that the economy of communion is a significant paradigm. That, pro that integrates spirituality and business to, to promote fairness and solidarity. End of presentation. Thank you.